Greetings. This is September 8th at 5 a.m. There's an old custom. If you hold your hand close to the ground and you can see your shadow, it's a sunny day. If you can't, it may rain. And if we look at the world view from NASA, it's very difficult to see the ground. Part of that reason is smoke and haze. Another part of that reason is impending rain clouds rolling overhead. All the forecasts are calling for precipitation and cooler weather. And up until a couple days ago, windy has been indisputable. It has provided the scoop on many weather events. However, right now the localized wind model is showing speeds up to 17, 18 kilometers an hour with gusts above 30 kilometers an hour. It's going from the south, the north, flipping around uh, different directions and we're actually going through a bit of a squall right now. However, if we look at the second wind model, I'm seeing three kilometers an hour coming lazily from the north. What these computer models are agreeing on is rain, a potential for it, not a lot, and increased winds on Saturday uh, going up to 15, 16 kilometers an hour with gusts over 30. I'm always referring to windy because it's very difficult to find localized wind data on uh, Environment Canada and other sources. You really have to hunt and find the link. And I'm not even sure where I found this page. Uh, let's jump over to the infrared now and take a look at the VIIRS system available on the Lance NASA link below. And we are seeing the province. Yes, there is still a lot of activity. There is considerable infrared still indicating fires along the western side of the Rockies, up in the Caribou, west of the Fraser Canyon. and of course the Elephant Hill wildfire. However, it does look more subdued in these recent days than it has in quite some time. The last report through the BC Wildfire Service was 50% contained. We've switched to the MODIS system just to see if it confirms the general area of these infrared hotspots and this system is only showing a couple of 12-hour spots. We've identified these before. They're approximately two and a half, three kilometers northeast of Watch Lake. There is activity in that area. Crews are working on a large fire guard that's going to extend from Sheridan Lake and down south to the Rayfield, then over to Jack Frost Lake and wind its way over to the Tin Cup Lake on the southwestern side of Mount Jim and when we switch over to the NRC data, this is through their interactive infrared mapping and the link is below, you can see patterned infrared overlaying random sort of natural hotspots. And if we take off the 24 hour layer, you can see where the most recent activity is and that's moving east of the Rayfield and we have a spot that's uh, about two kilometers northeast of Watch Lake. And we're looking at that intersection of the Little Green Lake Road and the North Bonaparte to the east of Pressey. Keep in mind, these infrared indications can be 500 meters to a kilometer off their intended position. And they may be obscured by smoke, haze, and we might not be seeing the full extent of the fire activity on the ground. We might only be seeing fringes that are perceptible and hot enough to be picked up by satellite. So let's move around the area using the Lance NASA system. These icons are a little easier to see on the screen. And we're looking north of Tin Cup Lake, north of no North Bonaparte Road, and we can see a long string of infrared. This could be part of a backburn that uh, has been reported. And we've moved over to east of Pressey toward the intersection with Little Green Lake Road and North Bonaparte. And here we're seeing extensive patterning. It does appear that a control strategy is being employed in this area. We've moved further north to the area southwest of Jack Frost Lake and northeast of Watch Lake. Watch Lake is in the lower left corner of your screen. Jack Frost is at the top. 
And again, more patterning that's shown up in this satellite update. And if we click on a hotspot, it's showing they were picked up at about quarter to five in the morning. So there was early activity there. We've moved a little bit further southeast. We're looking at the Rayfield area and what may be progressing towards Egan Lake. I'm not seeing any significant change without doing an overlay, but if you look to just lower than center on your screen, there may be some hot spots moving slightly eastwards. And if we look at the latest image on the MODIS system, again, not a lot of perceptible movement or expansion in these satellite images. So I think we have to be wary of the data that we're getting and refer to the reports on the ground. And those come from BC Wildfire Service and the links are below. So we'll check the updated fire perimeter map for September 7th. We are looking at Young Lake and four hotspots appearing southwest of the lake. And this configuration has been changing, but always in that same general area and a lot less activity than I've seen. However, this is another area where we're going to need visual confirmation. Moving southwards to High Hem, I'm seeing one along High Hem Creek or just south of it towards Loon Lake. And I'm seeing a couple on the High Hem Old Scotty Creek Road towards the Battle Creek and Brousseau area. And the group of infrared that was moving towards the Chartrand Lake, those aren't apparent on this display. As well, Sketchison fire crews are monitoring this situation and responding to anything that approaches the Dead Man River Valley, and that's remained quite clear. So we can look at the MODA satellite system, and I'm seeing more activity here. More hotspots have appeared through that haze. But there's no six hour infrared being displayed. It's all older, 24 hour, and likely a lot of smoldering with the occasional flare up. I'd like to move southeastwards now and just briefly take a look at the fire to the west of Cathedral Lakes. And I'm seeing a lot of activity in what's crossed the border into Canada. This is south of Highway 3, the Crow's Nest. And if we zoom in, I'm seeing extensive patterning over this forested block and around the perimeter. So there is activity there that looks like it's trying to move west and north on the fringes and a control strategy appears to be overlaid at this time. There are many more fires that I'd like to take a look at. It gets a little overwhelming. Peachland, I noticed there are a few new hot spots, maybe half a dozen that are on the western approach trying to go into Dark Valley. I'm not seeing a lot of heat coming off the center of that fire because it is quite obscured. So we're going to have to revisit different fires as uh, it clears up and maybe we can get some satellite imagery. I'd like to turn now to the bulletin issued by the Caribou Regional District and this came out for uh, I think midnight September 6 and that's just a, a renewal of the alert for the state of local emergency in Highway 24. So this order is now in effect until September 13th when it will either be rescinded or renewed again. So please do check the links below. I will post the Caribou one right at the top and I'll post a link to the updated BC wildfire map for the Elephant Hill. If you'll notice on the eastern side, just right of center of your screen, there's a small extension moving out towards Chartrand Lake. I kind of noticed that there are a few smaller extensions, more detail. If you're local to this area, you'll want to get this map and verify with the eyes on the ground and that's uh, BC Wildfire Service. So they're the ones that are putting this together and you should have the latest copy if you've been on evacuation order or evacuation alert. And while we're looking at this, I'd like to just show you an area south of Sheridan. I made an attempt to remember all the names of these lakes and their proximities. It's not possible for me. In fact, viewer Mary had made a comment that she was a little overwhelmed with all the cartography and the mapping involved in this analysis. And I will echo that sentiment. Every map I've looked at is different. 
They have different scales, legends, aspect ratios. North is not always in the same place. It becomes overwhelming. And what I might recommend is pick a map that works for you. And I have relied a, a fair amount on the back road map books and printouts from BC Wildfire Service and TNRD and the Caribou Regional District. And when I have these in my hand, it's something tactile and I can get a better perspective. So to sum it up, uh, we are seeing a little bit of volatility and some flare-ups on the edges of these fire perimeters and these fire flanks. There are bulletins stating that uh, BC Wildfire is doing a major program right now where they're employing a control strategy and building a large swath of fire guard stretching from lake to lake all the way from Tin Cup Lake up to Jack Frost over to Sheridan and then down the Rayfield Valley. That's an incredible endeavor. As well, we're having a lot of wind and weather patterns changing rapidly. We have increased velocities coming Saturday. We may have some precipitation, very welcome, but we also may get lightning. So you want to check uh, the wildfire map. The situation is dynamic and still volatile, but something inside me says Saturday will be a turning point. I can't say specifically why I have that feeling, but many different factors are adding up and one of them is the cooler weather. So everyone please be very safe, have your resources together just in case, and thank you very much for watching.